first lecture class that I ever walked into. I couldn't believe there were that many people sitting in a room uh, prepared to listen to me. That's what gives the book its structure. I was so surprised that instead of doing what I have done ever since, which is to stand up and talk, I decided it would be best just to, to sit down behind the table, which doesn't work when there are 60 people in the room. I had stayed up all night writing my first lectures ever, so I was exhausted and barely able to stand up. And I had um, readers for my class who knew more about the subject than I did, and it was pretty terrifying. These two coexistence temperatures they're changing. It's a strange experience it when you walk into a room and you realize that people are prepared to respect you and you haven't done anything to earn it yet. What's our guiding principle going to be? It was tempting to me to try and act like someone who commanded respect, and that's not who I am. When I would feel myself venturing into territory that I was not completely in control of, uh, it, was, it was very hard to know what to do next. This is really important. On the one hand, again, it creates the sense of depth. Over the years, the what's been most productive for me is, is just to right? realize Thank that you. getting to places where things are less comfortable for me um, is actually really productive, not only for me, but also for my students. New Deal liberalism was about the economy. I learned just that I didn't have to really impress them because they were impressed before I walked into the room because they were at Cal. Yet we're able to work together. I knew all this cool stuff and they wanted to know it too. I lowered my guard and, and I noticed that they lowered their guard and, and that the conversation then became so much easier. The chemical potential is way above that of liquid water. In a sense, you know, I gave up the default respect that you get walking into the room. But I did exploit something else, which is that, that uh, students' standards for professorial humor are exceedingly low. You know how I love my props in my demonstrations. So I brought a prop that's completely new for me. Uh, I brought a novel. When they can have fun with something, I know there's a connection. And it may just be the beginning of a connection, but it's something to build on. I do really enjoy myself in the classroom, and I think that comes across. An exquisitely and acutely sympathetic first-person narrator. One of the things I enjoy is that I don't know where it's all going, that there is a kind of danger to the thing, that I'm going to hear my students say things that I didn't expect, I'm going to hear myself saying things that I didn't expect to say. If I'm not engaging them, if they're not bringing uh, something to the table, if, if we're not both pouring our hearts into it, uh, then it's, it's an exercise. How much freedom do we have to tune the thermodynamic state of the system? If they're going to connect with how I know things, then they're going to go through the same excitement, the same surprise, the same frustration when they can't get something to work. I, I, I want to stir up the way they're thinking, and, and when we can get to a level where there's nothing in between their desire to understand and the knowledge and the material itself, uh, then things are easy. One of the things I do is show them how excited I am. Look, there's poverty in the United States. At first, I think they're kind of bewildered by this, jumping around and, you know, but they get it. They, they get why I'm so excited about these things. A set limit. I think they see me doing it, and it is a kind of licensing. That moment where across a table, two people, right, reading from different places, reading with different backgrounds, different levels of training, nonetheless land on that same moment. They've come upon something deep and something important and knowledge that they didn't have before. Uh, when, the, when they reveal that, it's, it's like opening a birthday present. And without that engagement, you can't be great at anything. Um, and our students are going to be great at things, all kinds of things. What I would like to see happen coming out of a particular class is I would like for us as, as a group to agree that the conversations we've had, the level of intensity that we've brought, has made them different that everything is embedded in context, that no set of facts stands alone. Saying that segregation was unconstitutional. That but the world is a complicated place, and that anyone who tells you it isn't is lying to you. Deferring compensation. And to question, you know, not, not out of meanness, but to be critical and skeptical of, of things that they hear, and to postpone true acceptance of that until they've seen a compelling demonstration it pays to pay really close attention to things. 
working to make a complicated world meaningful. That's incredibly important to understanding how books work, how ideas work. But I think it's also incredibly important to understanding how the world works. That the world, again, is made meaningful. The fact that they, they know that connection is there, uh, I think makes them more grounded intellectually in general. Uh, it makes them more confident in the things they know because they know not just how to do them, they know why they do them. This was a freedom that government would protect. These are students who will never ever meet a historian again and who never ever will have the chance to have these things explained to them. And they want to know. They want to know in, in greater depth how to think about the material, what the implications are. Often it's when they've understood something and then gone to the next level of thinking about how does this pertain to, to my research or things that I care about in the world that are different from what we've discussed in class. All of these little things not only add up to a term paper or to a class or even to a college education, but they start to add up to a way of life. One of the things that's amazing to me about teaching these classes is that I get this incredible opportunity just to talk to smart people who are interested in things that I'm interested in for a living. That seems real. It keeps us young intellectually. It, it keeps us away from a sense that we understand everything. Uh, and it, it constantly brings me the feeling that there's so much I don't understand. And that's always true, but it's easy without that to be content with the things you understand. My students allow me to think out loud with them. The CIO had played a vital role. The students the raise questions time. that propel me in different directions, lead me to research questions that I hadn't thought of before. That's where original work comes from. That's where original research comes from. Every time I teach a class, there's a moment when I have this sort of slightly out-of-body experience where I wonder why everyone doesn't just get up and leave. You know, I mean, there's no thing that keeps us there. We just agree somehow to sit in this room for an hour and a half talking about a novel or a poem. We just agree to do it. We stay because there's something special about that time. In developing intellectual connections, uh, when things work, uh, we have a, a bond. The reason I strive to teach well is because I value the students. I value what they've invested in learning things from me. It's not because it's my job. The reason I pour effort into teaching is that I want to do well by them. And they're grateful for it, and not just for me, also from their fellow students. They can be awed by each other every bit as much as I can be awed by them. Oh, I'm so proud of our students. Oh, they're wonderful. They're just, they're, they're wonderful.